this Nova Scotia's boat building busker. The paddleless hooves of the tear Following Obi's dream all the way to the Yukon. My heart was pounding. I was hiding under some burlap bag. And driving fast cars and hard bargains with Saskatoon's Hot Wheels Club. What are you willing to pay for him? Two dollars. We're on the move, on the go, we're on the road again. And now to Saskatoon for a car story. Not about station wagons, compacts, or SUVs. I'm talking about... And I don't care to... I like to be different, I guess. We're going to actually raise the mast. Raise the mast. You tell me You're good you and tall. That's just, just what I need, too. <laughs> Alexander certainly is different. Like his cement, he's an aggregate of many parts. You want me to go up with you? Okay. Do you want to put it in the... Happily married for 34 years and a father of two. He's also a poet, a philosopher, a performer, and even a part-time protester. I think uh, to be outstanding... You have to first overcome the fear of standing out. Thank you. Thank you. Alexander is a man of strong convictions. Thank you. Twice elected to county council, he's known around the community as someone who stands up for what he believes in, even if it means a night in jail. I threw the ballot box in the harbor. I disrupted the fe last federal election there. You threw the ballot box in the harbor? That was my vote. Oh, now she's coming the other way. That's, you won't go too far. You might not agree with Alexander's methods, but it's hard to argue with his principles. If you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win but think you can't, it's almost a sin you won't. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger, faster man, but sooner or late the one who wins is the one who thinks he can. And I, like I'm the son of a soldier, my father fought in the Second World War, and uh, the things that the people fought and died for uh, should not be uh, taken lightly in this day and age. You know? I must go down to the sea, to the lonely sea and the sky. And all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. And a tall guy to put the mast up. A tall guy to put the mast up. <laughs> and the wheel stick. And the wind. How long have you been reciting poetry? Uh, pretty much started in, uh, 1973. I took a course in public speaking. And a gray dawn. Uh, okay. And, uh, learning little That's philosophies. Back. And then I started looking for things to uh, memorize, like Robert Service poems, sea tales for sure, and children's stories. They have to be interesting, uh, catchy poems. That's, that's what I like. They need hang us tires to the mast and spars by a heel or an ear for a thumb. Was anyone in your family a sailor? Not that I know of. No. Was anyone in your family a poet? No. See now, you watching out for pirates? So where did you get this love of poetry? We're not sure. <laughs> We're not sure. That is a tale. Poetry uh, has a depth. Uh, like if you had a subject, you could have a room filled with volumes of books on that one subject. And a good poem could take all of that information and condense it and condense it to two, three verses and say the whole thing that was written in all those volumes of books. You know, it's really fascinates me. How are you doing? Alexander has memorized more than a hundred poems and loves to share them. Time for a sea tale today? I do a uh, busker here and there now and then through the summer. Pirates fight. Pirates fight? I can yeah. fit right in in waterfront and take Sheena the parrot with me. The breeze was crisp. And, uh, she's the artist. She draws Eddie the crowd. <laughs> and the paddleless goods of the tearful day. Why do you enjoy uh, reciting to people so much? Well, uh, the reaction of the people... Uh, no splendor such as the daily kin. I can mix up the, their emotions. It's good to liven people up. Uh, you can uh, make them mad one minute and then uh, mm -hmm. get them laughing and bring a tear to their eye. Of that quiet voice calling me, that long, low croon of the steady trade wind blow. It's a good pastime. Trade wind.
doesn't seem to be anybody else doing it. So that, that makes me uh, number one. <laughs> a gleam foretold in the chieftain's eye. And what the seeking or where they went, they knew nor cared. They were well content. The pirates fight. Joseph Alexander not only recites famous poems, he's written quite a few of his own. Now I'm a working man who's no longer in demand. So toss me a coin if you can, if you can. I will entertain you till I'm in demand. But toss me a coin if you can, if you can. Something to jingle would make my heart tingle. So toss me a coin if you can, if you can. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, are you first and foremost, Alexander? Are you a poet? Uh, are you a cement finisher? I must go down to the seas again. How do you characterize Alexander McKenzie? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Novelty, I guess, is a spice of life, <laughs> and I like, I like to be uh, the best I can uh, at what I do or take an interest in, uh, cement finishing or reciting poetry or building boats or, or protesting. Beautiful day. You know, I just like to try to search for the best way to live, I guess. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful day. From behind the Iron Curtain to the Canadian North,